Hello, YouTubes. Looks like I'm painting today. I may have got a wee bit carried away with the 3D printer recently, so time to start painting some stuff. So I bought this little starter airbrush and compressor kit. You just plug it in and away you go. I don't imagine it's going to be fantastic, but I've got to start somewhere. So because I got this, I thought I better build a little art studio. I built this little spray booth using two sheets of foam board, $1.50 each, some duct tape, some super glue, sharp knife, and some of these little magnets. And because it takes up quite a lot of space, I thought I'd better make it foldable. And uh, this took me like 30 minutes to come up with this. When you're done, fold it up and it, it can go on a shelf. It's, it's light, it's compact, it should work fine. And if I break it, I can build a new one pretty quickly. Should work fine. I've got something else coming this afternoon though before I can start using it. I've ordered one of those cake decorating rotating platforms so it'll just raise it off the ground a little bit which means you can spray something, rotate it, spray something, rotate it. Don't need to touch whatever it is you're painting, just rotate the table. While I'm waiting for that to arrive I need to nip out and get some supplies to make some acrylic paint thinner. I need Windex with ammonia, I need isopropyl alcohol, I need glycerin, and I need distilled water. That sounds really suspicious. I better buy them in separate shops. I now have my dodgy ingredients, my distilled water, my isopropyl alcohol, my glycerin. That was actually quite hard to find. And the uh, Windex, that is actually only going to be used for the airbrush cleaner, so it's not going to be used for the thinner itself. And a nice little squeeze bottle with measurement markings. That's going to come in handy. Now, there's all sorts of methods and recipes to make your airbrush cleaner and acrylic paint thinner. Some of them can be quite damaging to airbrushes, so I'm going to let you look your own recipe up. I'm going to go with what I saw on the internet. Right, let me find a lab coat and get mixing. Now, it's important to make sure that the plastic bottles you use can withstand those harsh chemicals. Best way I've discovered to find out if they're adequate is to leave them on a desk overnight and if you've got fluid on the floor by the time you get up in the morning, they were no good. Let's see what's in this airbrush kit, shall we? Oh, wow. Ooh. Mm. Hope you enjoyed that extensive review. Hey. If you want to pay me to do your advertising, pay me. Right, let me throw it together and see if it works.
Now, I've never used an airbrush before. I have sprayed larger items with a full size spray gun and compressor, you know, for car parts. But I've read the instructions for a full two minutes, so I think we're good to go. First thing we need to do is mix up some paint. Now, the sensible thing to do is to make some brown or grey paint, just in case we mess up. Instead of doing that, let's do some metallic paint because I want to paint these girder bridge side panels that I printed off. So we'll give this bottle a shake because that will make a difference, I'm sure. Take this little piece of annoying foil off. Oh, made a mess already. Wow, this is thick. Look at that. Okay, yep, got a nice big blob down there already. Now, I was going to use these little things, but I think they're just too small. And I'm going to need some room to stir it up. So I've got these giant ones instead. They've also got airtight lids that I can give it a right good shake when I'm ready. Right, um, this looks really thick. I'm going to give it more of a shake. Right, this was only $2.50. I'm really not that bothered if I mess this up. That's probably way too much. Pour in some thinner. I have no idea how much I'm putting in here, just squidge it in. Give it a stir. Now, in the instructions, it did say that you wanted it to be the viscosity of milk. I think it even said something like beautiful milk because, you know, Chinese translation. But basically, you don't want to see any pigment, any little bits floating about or, you know, sunk to the bottom. You want it nice and smooth, which is why I'm going to give this a real good shake with the lid on. Hopefully it won't all squirt out, but it's still looking metallic, so I don't think I've ruined it. But it still looks a wee bit lumpy. Kind of looks a bit like it's separating, but that's the nature of metallic paint, I suppose. I think the thickness is actually pretty good. Right, let me give it a good shake and then we'll put it into the, the spray gun. Set up my little studio. Oops. At least I hope this is airtight. Not quite. Not quite airtight. See what it looks like. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. So I filled my chamber about halfway. I think the most you're supposed to spit in is about two thirds, so halfway should be fine. So in order to make this work, you press it down, straight down, and just air will come out. When you're ready to paint, you would press it down and pull it back. The more you pull it back, the more paint will flow, apparently. This thing at the back, you can adjust to prevent you bringing it too far back. So I've got it kind of set to the middle. Okay, let's see if anything comes out. seen anything coming out. What's going on? Okay, I had this, I had this screwed too far in.
Not really coming out. Possibly the paint's too thick. Or maybe I'm just not seeing it in the white. Let's just go ahead and try and paint this stuff. You know what? I don't think this is acrylic paint. I think it's a water-based paint and it's doing absolutely nothing. Oh well, let's try some grey or brown. This time I'm putting a bit of masking tape folded over just to stop the girder things skating away. Okay. Now I'm using black with two drops of white because I kind of want a sun bleached effect, you know, and then obviously I'll be adding some weather. If any of this works, let's find out. Oh my goodness, it's pouring out this time. Um, I think I'm actually going to turn the pressure down a wee bit because that was quite a lot. Right, I'm down at number two pressure coming out of the machine. Sounds quite splatty. Um, maybe I need to turn this back down. I'll just lift it further away. Definitely working this time though. I guess it just didn't like that silver paint. Okay, let's leave that to dry and then we'll get more coats on and see how it looks when we're done. That turned out pretty good. Need to wait for it to dry. Meanwhile, I'll clean up my equipment and I'll give you a closer look. Well, that turned out pretty good. I'm really, really happy with that. Pretty much exactly what I was hoping it would turn out like. So, may as well give the company a bit of a plug. This little machine is called Oacer, or Oser. I'm going with Oacer. $75 on Amazon, probably about 50 American. That was 75 Canadian. And it's, it's great and completely portable, rechargeable. So you can either use it with power or just with battery, but obviously you need to make sure it's recharged. But it's going to be ideal for walking around the layout and spraying scenery. So, ideal. Until it breaks. Hopefully it won't. Anyway, link in the description if you want to look it up. So, that's me for today. Broken my airbrushing cherry. Today, if you're watching on Sunday, I'm at a train show. So hopefully I'll have a nice big bag of booty.
a booty bag, a nice, a lot of booty to show you on the next video. And a big smile on my face. Thanks for watching. That was fairly successful, I think. A bit of craft work. Oh, I need tidy again. See you soon. Bye.